Hello, I'm Mayu. I haven't done the mic test, so sorry, I'm loud. I'm a photographer, a storyteller, and a performance maker. Oh. Ten years ago, uh, I was photographing on the Todd River. I was with some dancers. They were from the body weather tradition. Their practice involves the understanding that the environment in which we occupy affects our bodies. And in turn, our bodies affect the environment and the place we inhabit. So I start wondering, being a migrant from Japan, whether what my responsibilities are as a migrant. And then it dawned upon me that I had yet to ask the traditional custodians of this land, would you mind if I settled here? Would you mind if I bury my bones here? Would you mind if I settle here? Would you mind if I bury my bones here? Would you mind if I settle here? Would you mind if I bury my bones here? So I began fulfilling that which I thought was my responsibility as an artist and a migrant. For three years, with three other artists, I went around to Japanese cemeteries all around Australia to make art at the cemeteries. Went to Townsville, Broome, Thursday Island, and many, many more. It was because I wanted to have a conversation with the indigenous peoples. I wanted to ask, hey, our mob is buried on your land. Insofar as you are the custodians of this land, would you look after our mob too? He proposes a project that looks at the notion that when you die, you become part of the landscape. The very land we walk upon is made up of our ancestors. And we're here tonight to pay honour and respect to the Japanese ancestors that came here for the pearling industry many years ago. There's a Japanese word called kuyo, which means a ceremonial settling of the spirits. to provide our own kuyo in a contemporary artistic response. The Japanese artists that you're going to see tonight, to their response to their ancestors being buried here, 
in their own choice that when they died, they have decided that they want to become part of this land in Australia and be buried here rather than return back to Japan. So by 2010, we'd been to more than a dozen Japanese grave sites in Australia. We had conversations with elders, communities. We had workshops with students, artists. We performed in the cemeteries. We exhibited with local art galleries. Just been everywhere, except that we never got around to the Japanese war cemetery in Kaura. This one was a little bit different. It was marked with the violence of the Second World War. All Japanese who died on Australian soil during World War II is buried here. Yasukichi Murakami is one of them, but he wasn't a soldier. He was a civilian like you and I. He died whilst interned at the Tatura internment camp in Victoria during the war. The first day of war, the day after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, as with all Japanese in Australia, Yasukichi Murakami was arrested as an enemy alien, interned. It became my responsibility to make art about World War II. The stone houses at 33 Cavanagh Street, Darwin. Yasukichi Murakami, a Japanese photographer, opened his photography studio here in 1935. This is where Yasukichi Murakami was arrested. His possessions were confiscated and his lifetime worth of photographs went missing. In 1897, at the age of 16, Murakami traveled from Tanami in Japan to Kosak in Western Australia aboard SS Saradin. He came looking for gold but he found himself working as a shop clerk for Takazo Nishioka at the Nishioka Emporium. Later, he became a photographer. In 1981, at the age of 18, I arrived in Melbourne from Tokyo, Japan aboard QF21. <laughs> I came looking for an education, but I found myself working as a waitress in a Japanese restaurant. Later, I too became a photographer. Great smile! Great smile again! Okay, now, would all the family members please come along here and stand around the bride and groom, please? Yes, yes, this way. Okay, great. Uh, maybe fan out that way a little bit. Yes. Okay, Ooh, the lady at the back with the pearls. Come a bit closer, that's right. You look great, here we go. One, two, three, smile. This is not how I saw myself being. This is not how I saw my career panning out. I started off wanting to be a photojournalist, imagining myself traveling to far off places. I imagined myself revealing the ugliness the futility of war. I thought that by showing people the truth, I could help stop these wars. But like Murakami, I take photos. Early photographs taken by Murakami at the Nishioka Photo Studio in Broome. These were the first photographs of his that I found. These portraits of Japanese who lived in Australia in the early 1900s are proof that these people once lived here.
the silent voices of Japanese in Australia. I keep hearing them, voices of the many forgotten Japanese who lived here, forgotten because the violence of the war has wiped out the memory of those that came here to work and make this place their home. I can hear their whispers, to be remembered, or is it to be recognized? I hear them in the wind, in the surf, in a desert, in the fields, through their burial here. They're now part of the landscape of this place. One day, we will be buried in this land. We too will become one with our landscape. And so will you. Arisa Yura. Yes, yes. Arisa played uh, the part of Mayu, which is a character based on me and my most recent work, Yasukichi Murakami, Through a Distant Lens. Thank you. Nice. Mayu and Arisa.